know about you, but I am just so grateful that you are able to be with us on this Sunday morning. Indeed, it is a great morning um, because the Lord has woke us up this morning. He's given us a right frame of mind. He's given us ability to access um, our senses, seeing, hearing, touching, and smelling. So we're grateful for what he has done on this morning. But not only are we grateful for the grace and mercy that God has given us, but he's also given us a new president and vice president for us to be able to start a new day. It is turning around and we're grateful for what God is doing. Um, so I was talking to some of my colleagues on yesterday. They said, what are you going to say to the congregation? I'm going to tell them, you know, we're going to celebrate hard, which was yesterday. We're going to worship God, which is today, but we have to get back to work on Monday morning. There's still so much work that needs to be done. People are still dying. People are still sick. Um, there's still a call for justice to be going on. So we need to get back to work and support the ones who we have now put in office. Thank you all um, for doing doing your civic duty of going out to vote. Um, we are grateful for what you have done. Um, this morning, we have a special treat. Um, we have one of our associate ministers that's going to be preaching on this morning um, in the person of Minister Julian Shanks. Um, um, we're grateful. He is one of my sons in ministry. I licensed him. Um, he is the son of Second Macedonia, and we're grateful for him being able to be with us on today. Um, I've been kind of stepping back a little bit um, as God is drawing me nearer. I'm in my writing phase of doing my doctorate of ministry. Um, and I'm grateful for all those that have been stepping up. Deacon Bryant Robinson Sr. led us in the time of study on this past Tuesday. Um, we're grateful for him. Um, for those that aren't able to join us on the Zoom platform, um, Brother Eugene Ross is our director of music, and he does a wonderful job leading us and preparing us for our time of hearing the word of God. Um, we also want to thank Sister Janae Rockmore, who makes sure that we go live seamlessly. Um, Sister Jolly has been one of our co-hosts, making sure um, that we need, if we need to mute people, we can mute them. That way there's no interruptions. Amen. Um, so now we're going to turn it over to uh, Minister Julian Shanks. Prepare your hearts and minds as he comes to you on this morning. Oh, for those that are on Facebook Live, please host a watch party to, for us to be able to <laughs> extend our reach to those that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Minister Julian Shanks. Good morning. Good morning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequaled greatness. Praise him with the blast of ram's horns. Praise him with the lyre and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with strings and flutes. Praise him with a clash of cymbals. Praise him with loud and clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, first, give an honor to God and uh, much love and respect to our pastor, Reverend Harold Jolly, and much love to all of you. I'm going to jump right in. Um, uh, uh, thank God did a lot of celebrating yesterday uh, uh, to think that we have a black woman who is a heartbeat away from the next president of the United States. Hallelujah. Um, but we're going to get right down to it today. Our sermon today, we're going to use two scriptures for our sermon today. First one is a very popular one. Uh, it comes from Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 to 29. Um, so when you have that, then uh, hold on to that, because we will then be moving to John, the 13th chapter, verses 34 and 35. So we're going to start with Luke, the 10th chapter, verses 25 to 29, and then John, the 13th chapter, verses 34 and 35. I will be re reading both from the New Living Translation. Luke 10, 25 to 29 reads as this. One day, 
an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. But the man wanted to justify his actions. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And then we move to John, the 13th chapter, verses 34 and 35. And it reads, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. From our text on today, the Holy Spirit has given me this statement that we will use as a topic for this sermon. The campaign is over. It's time we start a movement to prove it. The campaign is over. It's time we start a movement to prove it. Let us pray. My God and Father, Lord, we thank you once again for this awesome day. We thank you, Lord, for once again waking us up with new mercies. We thank you, Lord, for once again allowing us to be part of your number. Lord, we thank you for every opportunity that you have given us to come together, to lie at your feet, and to learn more about you. Lord, I'm asking you right now, Lord, uh, 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 just like when you, you, you talked to Jeremiah when he said that I am too young to bring the word, you told him to Go where I tell you to go and say what I tell you to say and don't be afraid of the people because you are with him. But Lord, you also reached out and touched him on the lips and said, there, I have put the words in your mouth. So Lord, I'm asking you right now, Lord, to touch my lips. Put the word, your words in my mouth right now, Lord, so that you would be glorified, but your people would be edified, Lord. Lord, we asking that you would prepare our hearts and our minds, Lord, to receive the word you have brought us here to get today. And we will always remember to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor that is due you. These and all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. The campaign is over. It's time we start a movement to prove it. If you're like me, you're probably thinking that on January 1st, 2021, Everyone should grab all of their 2020 calendars, pile them up in the yard, and burn any evidence that this year of this year from memory. Yes, 2020 should be treated the same way most elevator companies treat the number 13. The next time you find yourself in an elevator in a high-rise building that has more than 13 floors, try to push button number 13, and you'll understand what I mean because it probably won't be there. Yes, 2020 has been the culmination of a four-year unmasking of the underbelly of hatred and division that has survived in this country's society in the dark for years. Yes, a generation of politically correct dialogue has been shot down by a 45 caliber weapon in the White House that has shot holes through any idea of a unified country and left us with this exposed divided reality that we find ourselves in today. 2020 has also been responsible for another unmasking as a result of this awful COVID pandemic. To protect lives of worshipers, many church buildings have been closed and their quarantine members have had to use other mediums to connect <clears throat> with their Christian communities. This new norm of isolation, void of the usual distractions, have caused many of us to build an even closer 
relationship with God. But this new reality may have exposed a dilemma for some of us. If you've had to come to the building to find the presence of God, then where are you finding him now? 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, don't you know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? All right, Holy Spirit, I'm just talking about the unmasking of the church. In 2021, when the doors of the churches begin to open, we will now know to bring God with us to the building. But my apologies, let me get to what God gave me to preach today. Please forgive me. I know that I should be celebrating today. For only the fifth time in my almost 57 years on this earth, I cast a vote for the winner in a presidential election. And we have a black woman who is vice president elect of the United States. That should be reason for celebration, but I cannot ignore the facts. Yes, almost 75 million people cast a vote for change, but almost 71 million cast a vote for four more years of hatred and division. Different races voted, different genders voted, different sexual orientations voted, Black Lives Matter voted, white supremacists voted, protesters voted, looters voted, police voted, owners of boarded up and burned down businesses voted, and yes, Christians voted, and yet, we are in the same place we were in four years ago, divided almost right down the middle. Yes, there are millions of Christians in this country who profess to be led by God who cast their vote for four more years of hate. So I ask God the question, how can Christians who have been commanded to love vote for someone who fans the flames of hatred? And God led me to the word that is found in the 10th chapter of Luke. To understand this parable of the Good Samaritan completely, you have to take into account the social and political dynamics of the region at the time the drama plays out. The Jews who were Christ's audience in the parable hated the Samaritans. In the early decades of the first century, tensions between the two factions were high because Jews had destroyed the Samaritans' temple on Mount Gerizim, and the Samaritans desecrated the Jewish temple at Passover with human bones. Jews considered Samaritans to be half-breeds, intermarried with pagans, defiled, unfit for God's service. Jews avoid contact with Samaritans whenever possible and consider them worse than pagans. After all, Samaritans were people of the promise who did not value the promise enough to keep themselves pure. They were a divided region torn apart by hatred. Luke 10, 25, 29 says, one day, an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him, do this and you will live. But the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? If we ought to read between the lines in this dialogue, this Jew, this Pharisee, this expert in Jewish law is trying to use his interpretation of the great commandment to justify his prejudice for anyone who is not like him, a Jew, by narrowing the field of those he would consider his neighbor. 
In other words, if I just loved my kind, my community, my church, my family, and choose not to consider anyone who resides outside my circle, I will still feel fulfill God's command. Therefore, the Pharisees' entire justification is dependent on Christ's answer to one question. Who is my neighbor? In Jesus' response to the question, he sets out to broaden the Pharisees' understanding of who is my neighbor. Jesus answered by saying, a Jewish man was traveling on a trip from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a dis despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. A key note to inject here that needs to be placed here is that the robber stripped the Jewish man of his clothes. In that time, Jews and Samaritans were identified by the clothes they wore. The Jews and Samaritans dressed differently, which would have been an identifying mark. But with his clothes stripped from him, None passing by would know if he was a Jew or a Samaritan. The parable doesn't say why the priest and the Levite passed by the man laying half dead on the side of the road. But in my mind's eye, understanding the tensions in the region and the hatred between the two groups, the Jews didn't want to risk being caught helping a man who could have been a Samaritan. In this story, God used the Samaritan to show compassion toward the man who laid there on the side of the road, even though he too didn't know if the man was Samaritan or Jew. The moral of the story, though, is Jesus expanded the definition of the word neighbor. And his answer, the priest, the Levite, the robber, the Samaritan, the man laying half dead on the side of the road, were all his neighbors, that God has commanded us to love. I am sure the same justification used by the expert in Jewish law around the question, who is my neighbor, is also used by many of the churches in this country today. I'm sure that there are Christians in Montana and Wyoming and South Dakota and even parts of Pennsylvania who don't view a Christian in North Philly or the South side of Chicago or Compton as being their neighbor. It is no wonder why we find ourselves at this time so divided. This is why Christ and his infinite wisdom left us with a new command, which removes all confusion. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. With this new commandment, Christ has replaced our narrow focus of love your neighbor as yourself and replaced it with, just as I have loved you, you should love each other. With this new commandment, Christ has set the example. He has given us a new benchmark, a new litmus test, a new way to love, just as I have loved you. The Bible says, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though somebody might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Love like Christ loved. The Bible says, this is my commandment. Love each other 
in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one life for one's friends. Love each other just as I have loved you. The Bible says God is rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. Love like Christ's love. The Bible says, for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Love like Jesus loved. The Bible says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not uh, love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Can we prove it? Can we prove it? Christ wants to let us know today that he needs us to prove it. He is letting us know that our love is our identifying marker. It is our mark to the world that we are his. The world will know us by our love. Christ needs us today to start a movement to prove it. A campaign only lasts for a while. So this is not a love campaign. God wants us to start a movement to prove it. A movement requires action, love in action. If we're going to obey this new commandment, we have to love like Christ loved, with action, with commitment, with sacrifice, with power. Can we prove it? So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. For your love for love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. So I come here today to let you know that the campaign is over. Let's start a movement to prove it. Give God some praise. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You, Minister Shanks, uh, for blessing us with that timely uh, message on this morning uh, about loving one another. Uh, we sure enough do need some love at this time. Um, we're going to extend the invitation of discipleship um, to all those who might not know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins. He loves us so much that he does not want us to be out there in this world without his love, without being in relationship with him. If there's a man, woman, boy, or girl who's watching this broadcast on this morning that does not know Jesus, if you don't have your own personal relationship with him, the Bible tells us that if we confess with our mouth and believes in our heart that Jesus Christ died and God raised him up from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. So what does that mean, being saved? Being saved means that we've been rescued um, from the presence, the penalty of sin. God is bringing us out of situations that's destroying us, and he wants to place us in situations that's going to bring us life and bring us life more abundantly. If there's somebody out there who does not know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins. This is your invitation. This is your time to come to know him. We don't care where you live. We don't care what economic status you have. We don't care what gender you are. We don't care what ethnicity you are. The gospel is for everybody. Um, all is all you have to do is believe in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, all you have to do is put something in the chat. Uh, you can say it's me and we'll have somebody reach out to you. You can call the church office at 215-457-9750. Again, that is 215-457-9750. Or you can visit our website, www.smbapt.com. Dot o -R -G. Again, that's SM for Second Macedonia, abbreviation for Baptist, B A 
pt.org. There you'll see a link for a digital discipleship card. You visit, fill that digital discipleship card out, and we will have somebody get back to you to pray with you, to give you the next steps that you need to take in order for you to solidify your relationship with Jesus Christ. So, uh, we pray that you have been blessed on today. As always, we want to encourage you to sow into this wonderful ministry that God has given us charge over. Uh, we are doing our best to make sure that we go beyond the walls of the building, that we would normally find ourselves in. We want to continue being impactful and doing impactful ministry. After all, we are a life in the community of Logan. Amen. Um, would you give with us? Would you sow into our ministry? Uh, we're trying to do wonderful things still to make sure that the community stays connected. Uh, upcoming Thanksgiving is coming up. We want to make sure that people have some type of food on their table. So we're going to be giving out turkeys, first come, first serve. We need your help in order to offset some of the expenses that we have coming up. So would you please sow into our wonderful ministry? Also, tithes and offerings is always a given. We want to make sure that we do what God has instructed us to do. Yes, it's an Old Testament commandment, but it extends over into the New Testament. And he goes beyond our tithes and offerings. He says to give liberally, give generously give as much as God has placed on your heart if there's somebody out there um, that wants to partner with us we invite you to be with us as always uh, on behalf of myself sister Jolly um, the leadership of the second Macedonia Baptist Church we thank you for being with us on this morning we are here every Sunday live on Facebook at 9 30 a.m you can join us uh, to study the word of God every Tuesday beginning at 6 30 we start off with prayer and then we go right into the teaching of the word of God visit our website you'll see our our Zoom platform information you can get on and you can study with us. My brothers and sisters, God bless you. Um, to the members of Second Macedonia that jumped on Facebook Live, thank you for sh hosting watch parties on this morning. Uh, don't forget we are having a church conference this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock. The Reverend Dr. Vernon Walton um, will be our facilitator at 9 o'clock. It's from 9 to 11 um, through our tribal ministry. This is our yearly conference. We invite you to be with us. God bless you. We pray that God continues to keep you whole, keep you safe during these uncertain times, but we know we serve a certain, uh, um, a faithful God. Uh, let us look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the message that was brought forth. Now, Lord, we pray um, that you don't allow these this message to fall on shallow ground, but allow it to be deeply rooted into our lives. Uh, uh, come on, repeat after me. Um, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 May God continue to bless you. Have a wonderful day, my brothers and sisters.